Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the double pendulum problem. So we have a, a pendulum attached to another pendulum here. And we're going to assume the general case in which the two lengths and the two masses are different to each other. And again, once again, we're going to neglect the mass of the rods. We're going to consider the masses to be a lot larger than those. So the first thing we do is we establish a coordinate system as we did here. And now we're going to transform this problem into the domain of polar coordinates. So essentially we have radius times this, radius times that. But be very careful in the way you define your angle because now the horizontal component is going to be equal to the sine of that angle. So x1 is going to be a one sine of this. And x2 is going to be this displacement and then plus this displacement because remember this is the position of the second pendulum with respect to the first one but this is of two body systems so we need to take into account the fact that this is also moving with respect to the original uh, pivot point here now for the second for the two vertical displacement we employ essentially the same technique that we used before we have the, the potential is taken with respect to this point here, so basically the total height minus the, the position here, so that gives us the potential, um, not the potential energy, but rather the displacement in Y. And then for Y2 we do the same, so the total length here is going to be the sum of those two lengths, and then the total position here, so it's going to be the vertical component here, and the, the horizontal component of the force, and the horizontal component of, of this displacement as well, so we have this here. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the following definition. We know that the total kinet kinetic energy is going to be half of mv squared. And in fact, it is actually quite useful to write out the Lagrangian for the whole system. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to add all the different uh, kinetic energies and potential energies and in the end that will allow us to get the equation straight off without having to separate this into two parties. So what I'm going to show you in this video is the really nice advantage of Lagrangian mechanics over Newtonian mechanics is that you can uh, in, you can pretty much just put all the equations, all the energies and all that stuff into a single set of equations instead of just splitting this off into two free body diagrams and then solving for each individually. So this is the sum of the velocities. Now we're going to use the fact that this velocity is just a scalar uh, quantity. So basically it's the magnitude of the, of the velocity vector squared. So if we break this down into components, we're going to get the following. This is going to be x dot 1 squared plus y1 dot squared. So those are the individual velocities of the first body. And then this one is going to be, on of course, we need to take into account that the masses are different as well. So m1 and m2. So m1 here, and now we're going to have m2 x dot 2 squared plus y2 dot squared. So now what we do is we differentiate this one with respect to time and then plug them into this formula. So x dot 1 is fairly straightforward. Remember, because theta is a function of time, we need to employ the chain rule. So if we differentiate this, we get the following. The time derivative of the inside function is just theta dot 1, and then the derivative of the outside is cosine of theta 1. And we do the same for x2. So x dot 2 is going to be L1 theta dot 1 cosine theta 1 plus L2 theta 2 cosine theta 2 and then for y dot 1 we're going to have the following so we're going to get we're going to get uh, <coughs> this one right here so we're going to differentiate this so this is essentially just going to disappear from the equation and then this one here we apply the chain rule once again so basically this becomes a positive so l1 theta 1 sine theta 1 and then for the second body, these two disappear, and then these two are going to become L1 theta 1 sine theta 1. And then this here is going to be L2 theta 2 dot sine 
theta t. And the next thing we're going to do is find out what the kinetic energy is. So we're going to plug this into the formula here. So half of m1. Now we're going to square this. So l1 squared theta 1 squared cosine squared theta 1 plus l1 theta 1 squared sine squared theta 1. So right away we know this is going to just disappear from here so we're going to have plus now for this one it's going to be a little bit more complicated so what I suggest we do is before we plug anything into here let's calculate the quantities x t squared so this one is going to be the following we have l1 l2 theta 1 theta 2 cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2 so basically that's going to result from multiplying these two so this is going to be two of those plus l1 squared theta 1 squared cosine squared theta 1 plus l2 squared theta 2 and this one should be dot cosine squared theta 2 and then for y2 dot we're going to have the following 2l1 l2 theta 1 theta 2 and then this is sine theta 1 sine theta 2 and what else are we going to have here well we're going to have plus l1 theta 1 squared cosine squared theta 1 plus L2 squared theta so I forgot the square so you gotta be very careful it, it takes a little bit of time so T squared sine squared theta 2 and now if we add these two together what we find out is that we're going to get the following and one of the things that we can do if we add these two together is we know there, there is a uh, trigonometric identity that basically relates the sum of these two angles. So if we factor out everything else, this should become... So the sum is going to be 2L1, L2, theta1 dot, theta2 dot, right? And then this plus that is going to be cosine of theta1 minus theta2. So sometimes it's quite useful to have a few trigonometric identities thrown around to simplify things a lot. And then apart from this, we're going to get the following. So in this case, we're going to add this to, so you notice that this is going to vanish because of the trigonometric identity. So we're going to be left with plus L1 squared theta1 dot squared plus, and the same happens to this one. So L2 squared theta2 dot squared so in the end the, the kinetic energy is going to be half of mv or not mv but rather we're going to have the first component here which is going to be the following so we have i'm actually just going to put it here because this is going to simplify so l1 squared theta 1 dot squared so basically this and that disappear. Now for the second one, we're going to have plus half of M2. Now we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff here. So we're going to have L1 squared theta 1 dot squared plus L2 squared theta dot squared 2 plus 2 L1 L2 theta 1 theta 2 and cosine of the difference between the two angles all right so now that we have that we have for kinetic energy so now let's do the same for the potential energy well the potential is going to be mg y1 min plus mg y2 so we only have gravitational potential energy in this case 
and now what we're going to do is just combine the two so this one is going to be m so this is m1 m2 don't forget the masses or difference m m1g and then if we remember correctly y1 was l1 minus l1 cosine theta1 and then for the second one we had plus m2g l1 plus l2 minus l1 cosine theta1 minus l2 cosine of theta2 so that's going to be our potential energy so now all we need to do is write down the full Lagrangian for the system so this is going to be the Lagrangian of the the two bodies combined so L is going to be T minus V so we're going to have half of M1 L1 squared theta dot squared plus half of M2 times this whole bunch of stuff here so L1 squared theta dot 1 squared plus L2 squared theta dot 2 squared plus 2 L1 L2 theta 1 dot theta 2 dot cosine of theta 1 minus theta 2 and close in brackets and now we're going to subtract the potential energy so this is going to become minus m1 g l1 and now we're going to have plus m1 g l1 cosine theta 1 and then minus m2 g l1 plus l2 plus m2 g l1 cosine of theta 1 plus m2 g l2 cosine of theta 2 so hopefully we didn't miss out on anything so it looks really messy it looks really complicated but once we have this all we need to do is uh, apply the euler lagrange equations and that will give us the equations of motion so we will continue that in the next video